Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a couple, we rank all of our favorite uh, nerd movies. We're starting with the Marvel movies, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That way you get a male perspective, you get a female perspective, you get the best of both worlds. So we rank and score these movies. We give them a score sheet. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, go ahead and fill that score sheet out online if you want to check that out. It's down in the description below. And based on the score, then we rank them among the uh, Marvel movies. Yeah, and it really started one night. We were on our drive home from work and we were talking about what we thought of the different Marvel films because we're yeah. obviously big fans. And uh, once we ranked them off the top of our heads, we thought, you know, we should do this with a score sheet and we should really make this official. Yeah, it's the most scientific way to arbitrarily score a film. And this really isn't even our favorites list. It's not, we're, not, we're not even ranking it based on our favorites. We're just basing it on what we think makes up a good Marvel movie. You know, we think Marvel has a lot of humor in it, yeah. a lot of great action scenes. And what's great about the Marvel movies is that they're all connected. So they bring in a lot of characters from different movies. And, you know, a lot of your favorite characters are in, in these movies. So that's some of the stuff that goes into our scorings. So yeah. now on to our review for Spider-Man Homecoming. Our first category is lead male and lead female likability. Only we do have a dilemma in this movie. Yes. There really was no strong female presence in this film enough to put her in the category of a leading role. However, there were two very strong lead males. One was, of course, Peter Parker, also Spider-Man, and the other one was Ned. For Ned, as important as he is, I gave him a one. I thought he was oh. kind of boring. Ned, you can come and be in my inner circle of friends because I thought you had great loyalty, you were a ride or die buddy, and I think you supported Peter Parker in a way with both humor and heart, which is obviously something that this teenager really needs at this point in his life. So I gave you a four, Ned. Congratulations, Ned. You get to hang out with Thor from the Dark World and Jane Foster. <laughs> Have fun, Ned. You win. <laughs> and Captain America and Iron Man and Gamora. Yeah, yeah, and many whatever, other whatever, people whatever. Who are awesome <laughs> and not hanging out with Ken. So for Peter Parker for Spider Man, I gave him a four. I want this guy in my inner circle of friends. I like his humor. Uh, he's smart, and I think that he's someone that is, is trying to do the right thing. And you know, he's, he's trying to. He, he wants to prove himself, and he wants to do the right thing. And that's somebody, that's somebody that I like, and you know, I want him in my group of friends, so I give him a four. I did not give you a four, Peter Parker. Nope. Uh, she wants, she wants to have Ned over Peter Parker? I would. Get out of here. I, I think Ned would make a better friend. Um, for me, I liked Peter Parker, and I gave him a score of two when he's of age. Oh, ouch. I will definitely grab a beer with him. I just think the bar was a little bit higher for me for Spider-Man. It was Ned high. That's <laughs> So we're skipping our next category, it's uh, Hero Bang Ability, and the reason we're doing that is because this deals with uh, high school age kids, So and we're not in high school, so it's just not appropriate for us to do that. Yeah, um, just wrong. very wrong. So next we're doing is Hero Relatability. Um, for Ned, I gave Ned a 1. I know some people like that, but I wouldn't call them friends. I actually gave both Peter Parker and Ned the same score. I gave them both a 2. Um, I said, it's not me, but it, you know, I mean, it could be one of my friends or family. These are two very relatable kids representing high school feelings that I think all of us have had at one point or another in our school years. Yeah, I gave Peter Parker a four. I said it was uh, like, you know, looking into a mirror and they saw my soul when they were writing this character. I've always connected with Spider-Man. Wow. Um, growing up, it was my, he's been my favorite character throughout. His need to want to prove himself to Tony Stark is, you know, like I'm the youngest, I'm the, I'm, I'm the baby of the family. So he's trying to prove that like he's old enough to, you know, to, to take on the world and same thing with me. You know, I said, I want to, you know, prove my brother. I said, hey, I'm not the baby anymore. But, you know, it's like, you keep falling back into those habits of, like, being the baby. And, like, Peter Parker keeps following those habits where, like, he screws up. Uh, so I can relate to all of that. Seeing myself him and, in him a lot had to do with my my youth and growing up and teenage years and whatnot. So. so the other key part to this movie, besides our leads, is our villain. Our villain in this was the Vulture. His end goal was to make enough money to support his family. I don't know. It's kind of a weak end goal. To me, at least for a villain, it's a relatable end goal. I mean, we all want to provide for our family, I get that. How many people does his end goal affect? I give him a zero. It doesn't really affect anybody. Um, I mean, it eventually ends up fight affecting Spider-Man, but that's because he butts in. He, he, he like, mm -hmm. sticks his nose into it and starts... He forces his way into the, into the conversation. Before that, it didn't affect him at all. I gave him a one, which is only the hero, really. He was okay with killing Peter Parker, which you're... A person okay with killing a kid so yeah. you're a little more dangerous than nothing so how strong is the villain compared to the hero I gave this a three I thought he was a lot stronger than our hero so the fact that spider-man has to pull back a little bit 
makes him a little bit weaker than the villains that he fights because they're not holding back at all. I gave him a two. Uh, I said that they're equal to each other. And the reason I said this was, in parentheses, in parentheses I put, two mortals in fancy suits. <laughs> so next is, do you care about the villain? I said I gave him a one. I said only because I want the hero to win. Yeah, I also gave him a one, and very similar to you. For me, it was pretty much a zero throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and then he dropped a building on Peter Parker. Villain bang ability, because the only person of age in this film to bang is our villain. So... <laughs> How do we feel about banging the villain? Uh, zero. It's, yeah, definitely. No thanks, I'm good. Yeah, me too. Up next are side characters. We have, uh, Liz. Yep. MJ. Yep. Aunt May. Tony Stark. We have Tony Stark, of course. Happy. Happy. And The Flash. And The Flash. Yeah. I think he's just Flash. I mean, he's not The Flash. He's not the, the superhero Flash. I'm giving MJ and I'm giving Aunt May a zero. Whoa. Two characters that are pretty essential to a Spider-Man film and who normally I really like, I both gave them both a zero. MJ is just completely not necessary in this film at all. She's just here to set up the love interest in the next movie. Yeah, so I, I don't find her like essential at all. If you take her out of this film, okay. Like she was kind of there for humor, but I didn't find her funny. Aunt May, they just completely missed the boat. They pick one or the other. If you want to make her this, like the sexy aunt, then make her the sexy aunt. Don't like put glasses on her and make her like the dorky like aunt or whatever i thought aunt may and peter's relationship was forced mm. and it didn't I, I i didn't i didn't i didn't like it <laughs> so they both got a zero I, I mean i didn't go that far uh but i did give mj liz and aunt may all a one um i said that they're for the plot and it's really because i didn't find them contributing in any other way not in humor not in like ability i mean for me they were just they were just there. I gave Liz a uh, one as well uh, for the same reasons. I also gave Happy a one. Um, I thought he was just there for the plot. Aww. I know. I like Happy. I mean, like ability, he scores very high. But he was just kind of there to be the, the, the babysitter for Peter Parker. So I gave Happy a two. Yes, he was, he was the babysitter. But I think if he's the babysitter, it's to Tony Stark's more absentee work-obsessed father. <laughs> Um, so I feel like Happy analogy. actually takes on a little bit more of a paternal edge than just being a babysitter okay. to Peter Parker. And for that reason, I think he makes him a little more likable, redeemable, and relatable because he's sort of that, you know, keep your chin up, kid, go back to school, like doing all of those mm -hmm. things, which were like, yeah, we've all heard that from some parent figure when we we're a teenager and we probably roll our eyes at them and then we, you know, grow up 15 years later and realize mm -hmm. that they were right. I also gave Flash a score up too, as much as I totally dislike this character wow that's awesome to this character because the actor really made me hate his guts yeah uh i had a visceral response to this kid um i actually was bullied when i was in school and Aww. so i yeah i was um I even had like a death threat from a girl when i was in junior high yeah what oh yeah you didn't tell me this i'm just finding out now on camera well, you know, you had like a really touching moment with the camera in our audience like a week or two ago, so I figured I would open up about my history now. <laughs> yeah, but um, she knew all the stuff I said. I didn't know that. That's true. Um, she says she says she doesn't get me drunk to open up, and then she's the one that now is dropping bombs on me. Anyway, I think a lot of people dealt with some bullying in their childhood years. I want their names. I want these bitches' names. I'm going to go after them and find them. Um, but I think Flash being so horrendous to Peter Parker... Mm -hmm. um, and, and publicly ridiculing and humiliating him was one, something that I in the audience could really relate to, but two, I think it makes Peter Parker more relatable because, mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, they got someone far too looking for Peter Parker, far too good looking for Peter Parker. Despite his good looks, he's he's not like the heartthrob mm -hmm. of his high school, and you know, it knocks him down a peg or two in terms of this social hierarchy if he's made fun of. So it makes him a little bit more of someone that we can relate to. I thought I was going to get knocked for giving Flash a two, but I'm glad that we agree on it. And okay. I think everything that you said, it, it, I feel the same way about Flash. You know? Which just leaves us with the last character, Iron Man. And uh, for me, he was the MCS. I gave him a five. I thought he was the most central side character. He had the humor. He had the heart. So I gave him a three because what stuck out in my mind was the contribution of the humor. Mm -hmm. um, that being said... I said it after the film, and I didn't clock it when I was scoring it, which was dumb, but I was like, the best parts of this film was the scenes with, with Tony Stark. Yeah. Which, literally, right there, would make it in the 
removing him from this film makes it barely watchable. Which is a four. Which is a four. So I was already wrong, and I, <laughs> I knew the difference because I said the difference afterwards. I just didn't mm -hmm. score it appropriately. But I think you're 100% right. I think he deserves the MCS. So next up, we have the plot. What did you, what did you give it? <laughs> you know she didn't give a great score, but she wants to know what I gave it. Uh, I gave it a two. I thought it was entertaining, but it was predictable. I gave it that same score. I think where this movie also lost me was in lack of... of <laughs> this is here, lack of a solid female presence. Mm. Which brings me ahead to our next category. Female empowerment. Which is what role do women play in this movie? So I think I know what you give it. I give it a zero. They're just there for productive purposes. Totally a zero. All the women in this movie, I'm sorry, they don't represent women well. They're all irritating just in different ways. Yeah. And that, to your female audience, is very isolating. Uh, so now we've completely bashed it. Now let's go on to the soundtrack. Uh, maybe something a little bit better. I gave soundtrack... Uh, so I gave soundtrack a two. I thought there were a couple of cool tunes in this film. I gave it a one. I said there were one or two, one or two cool tunes in here. Humor. As is consistent with origin stories, humor is never really the highest winning category in these types of stories. They Humor tends to get better later on once we've established who the characters are and know a little bit more of their history. Mm. So this one's no different. It got a humor score of 16. Uh, for me, it got 17, so I think we were pretty close on that one. They tried to add the element of Spider-Man making jokes, while he's, um, but the jokes kind of fell flat. And also, they didn't make the jokes while he was fighting. Like He like swung in and made a joke. And then, like, the fighting happened or whatever. What's great about Spider-Man is that he taunts his enemies as he's fighting them and then it rattles them and gets in their head. Like, that's what gives him an advantage sometimes when he's fighting them. Visual effects. I get visual effects, too. I thought there were one or two cool scenes in that. It got a score of three. It was definitely big screen worthy. So that brings us to action sequences. Uh, we agreed that there were five main yes. action sequences in this movie. And I gave them a score of two. I said there were, you know, one or two cool scenes. And the uh, same thing, I give it a two as well. Um, up next is dialogue. I gave dialogue a two. I said there were some quality, memorable one-liners in there. I gave it a one. I said it didn't take away from the film, but I couldn't quote it very much. Next up is love story. So an obvious pick for this love story would, of course, be the unrequited love story with MJ or the reaching so high for the popular girl Liz. The I think it's more Liz than it would be MJ. MJ is a very big stretch to say that was the love story. Honestly, I think they're both stretches. I didn't think the love stories in this film at all were very interesting, except for one. We went with uh, Ned and Peter Parker, a friendship. Yeah, I think the friendship love story in this one is one, more interesting. Two, I think it's just more crucial to Peter Parker at this stage. To me, I didn't. I, I thought the, the Liz storyline, I bought it. Being that awkward teenage kid, I, I could relate to that. So I, that's why I thought like it was believable, the dynamic that they were showing between Liz and Peter Parker. Um, you know, being someone that's reached, you know, in, for the stars and was successful in grabbing it. Um, I, could, I could relate to that. I was going to give it a two anyways. And I gave the Ned one a two. I, I gave, so it's, I think it's believable at least. I think their friendship's believable. For Ned, I, I said, I, I gave it a two. I said, it's believable at least. I think that it will get better. I think they gave us just enough of it for me to buy into it. That brings us to our final category, heart. And for this one, I gave it a two. I said it was warm fuzzies. When the building collapses on, on Peter Parker and Spider-Man, um, I thought that uh, Tom Holland did amazing in that, in that mm -hmm. scene. And when he cries out for help, Ooh. and you just, you realize he's a kid. Yes. And to me, that was such a quintessential Spider-Man moment. Because um, you always want to see like the, the kind of torn mask, and you know, Spider-Man's kind of, his, his costume's all torn up. I mean, yeah, I, I gave it warm fuzzies too. Uh, my genuine heartfelt warm fuzzies came with the Tony Stark scenes, mm. uh, taking away the suit and giving the suit back. I agree with you. It, it wasn't warm fuzzies when a building was <laughs> on Peter Parker. No. But I was genuinely impacted by that. And the same, yeah. I mean, in the same way that you said, like, here's our hero suddenly screaming, like crying out for help, like a child crying out for its mother. And, yeah. and it was just... We don't see any other hero like that no. in that position. Uh, so for me, I gave Spider-Man Homecoming a 62. And I gave it a 61. So we're pretty close. We are. Yeah. But, but... it lost some points. Yeah. Um, it got minus five points for boredom. There was just some moments where, you, or, where I checked out and uh, kind of was wondering how much longer we had in the, in the film. That brings my total score to a 57 for Spider-Man. And that brings mine to a 56. 
uh, which gives Spider-Man a total score of 56.5. Even if you don't agree with us, if you uh, kind of liked our, our style and uh, what this video is about and our scoring system and whatnot, go ahead and give us a, a thumbs up down there and uh, you know consider subscribing to our channel and checking out some more of our videos. Uh, we'd love to have you come keep coming back and checking out our checking out our, our films. Plus, if you do subscribe and if our subscriptions keep growing, we are going to do some bad Marvel reenactments. And mm -hmm. you can even pitch us an idea or two. Yeah, we need 200 subscribers for that. So help us get to that. And uh, like I said, go down in the comments, submit your score, and let us know what you thought about Spider-Man Homecoming. Our score was 56.5. But that is definitely not definitive.